Hello, Evis. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I am. Uh, I was intrigued during our exploration call to hear from you how you use the elements um, in your coaching and as a kind of personality class. Yes. And yeah, we'll dive deeper into that. And I always start with the same question. When did you start calling yourself a facilitator? And actually, do you? You know, it's a great question because I never understood it until I understood it. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, it's so interesting that I would heard the word uh, facilitator. I would heard the word presenter, trainer. There's so many different ways. And I never really understood the difference until um, I met a, I'm going to call him a young man, but he's a, quite an older gentleman. And he says, what you do is not facilitating. You're just talking at people. You know, you facilitating is to facilitate a group, you know? So I, I had to practice mm -hmm. not speaking so much. I had to really hold myself back and allow myself to go with the flow of the group dynamics. And the less I speak, the better of a facilitator I feel I am. So it wasn't until maybe a handful of years ago whether I, wh where I really understood it and was able to implement that style. Wow. So I would say that's where I, my awareness came. And thank you for sharing that. I think it's so powerful on many levels. One that you do have this person who is kind enough to help yeah. you see what you didn't see. Yes, I thought I was a facilitator by just getting up and talking to the group and sharing all my knowledge and asking a question here or there. So he taught me to rearrange my classroom into like a semicircle so that we could feel more connected instead of classroom style. So he really was um, a great mentor in that sense. So I realized that I was falsely calling myself a facilitator prior. I didn't know what that was. So I didn't actually use that term until I started to um, to learn. And it's a constant learning. I, I don't think I'm ever, ever there. It is. And I think especially if you have to retrain yourself to speak less, listen more, maybe ask different questions then as well. I think as a trainer, as a, as a person who who teaches or who comes to a space because they're teaching. Very often we ask questions to test. Do you know the answer or not? Whereas a facilitator asks ask a question to prompt. Yes, yes, yes. And I am uncomfortable with silence. I speak quickly. I move quickly. So if there's like a moment of silence, the hardest part was training myself to just pause because the at a, at a certain point that the conversation starts and i was losing so much valuable time with people by not taking that that intentional pause yeah love it thank you for sharing that <laughs> great question <laughs> and i remember from our exploration call that you actually have a background in astrology and yes. feng shui Yes. And I'm very curious how this has informed your facilitation. Uh, yes, it's um, let me start with the base. A lot of people think that astrology is something that you read in the newspapers and it's this sort of fortune telling thing. Uh, usually, if you don't understand the discipline, that's what we go to because that's what we're used to. Uh, what astrology does is it takes the time, location, and day of a person's birth and looks at a map of the sky. And that map is individual like a thumbprint to the billions of people on earth. And from that, it's an ancient discipline. So we can discern a lot of things about the individual. It is not a fortune telling. It does not dictate who you are, but it gives us a guide as to your, who you are. And we can also look at cycles meaning like, when did you move? When did you change jobs? When did you go through life changes? So from doing tens of thousands of sessions over the past 25 years, what I've learned is that every single person is unique and every single person has a different way in which um, they shine or that you can approach them. So it's all about the, 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 
the personality, I'm going to say, but more importantly, just the intrinsic nature of a person. Mm -hmm. So from that, I garnered that not everyone is a cookie cutter. We, we And we know that, but I really learned that. Then feng shui is the um, discipline of setting up the environment for greater flow. And so I can speak to that in that we all have been in a room and felt this is this is just feels so me I feel so comfortable I'm so productive here and then we've been in other rooms it could be beautiful new designer oriented but you just can't seem to get settled mm. so feng shui helped me to understand the energetics of a room and I also am able to bring that into my facilitation for example Oftentimes when I walk into a room to do uh, something that I've been hired to do, they set up the chairs in straight lines. So the, the facilitator stands in front and then there's just all these straight lines of, of rows of chairs. Yeah, um, yeah. So in, in that, in, 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 in feng shui, we want to create a hug. We want to create comfort. We feel most comfortable when there's curves in the room. Think of the mother's hug. Uh, there's discipline and structure, which is linear and necessary, but there's also um, the, the emotional aspect of things relates to roundness. So what I'll, the first thing I'll do is I will take those chairs and I will start to create sort of a semicircle so that I have every, if somebody's not looking extreme right or left, they're, they're literally able to focus in on each other. So I set up rooms like that. I, I'll take corners and I'll put trees or, you know, if there's some um, artificial plants or something, I'll try to create a, a hug in the room so that people feel safer. So that's how it's influenced me, understanding people, understand the energy of the space, and then also bringing that into a very intimate space where we are trying to uncover and, and elicit uh, deep conversation. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. And thank you also for explaining a little bit where astrology comes from and what we might get wrong because we are maybe, as you say, too used to the headlines yeah. and horoscopes in the in the yeah. paper. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, um, we with two colleagues were um training or hosting a course in leadership through facilitation in the people's module, Kate and Florentine, they used um, as an introduction, astrology or the horoscope. So what uh, zodiac sign are you? Uh -huh. um, what does it say about you? And what does it say about us that we are so attached to certain personality types and that we have this um, this pull towards classifying people? Yeah, it's interesting. I think we all like to have an understanding of the people and places around us. Just naturally, I want to know why you're doing this. What is what, what is this for? So by having these sort of uh, little, I, I guess I want to call them archetypes, not really boxes, but sort of archetypes that people fall in, we now know how to approach. Like if I know that, for, for example, as an astrologer, if I know that you are a fire sign, that would be a Leo, a Sagittarius, perhaps an Aries. I would know there's a part of you that's uh, in, almost impatient, competitive, willing to stand up, answer the question. If you're more of a water sign, I am what you would call triple water, which means like think of gravitationally how water comes down. Water is very inward focused, very, very contemplative but also very introverted. So water signs have a harder time. They just need more time to warm up to the situation in order to start flowing. So understanding Cancer, uh, Scorpio, um, Pisces, these are all water signs they tend to observe before they move in. So uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to take my background into what I do, even though most times when I'm facilitating a corporate uh, function nobody knows that I'm an astrologer or that I used to do feng shui it's just like almost something within me that has has helped me yeah and I and I guess um, that's just an assumption that this has also informed you as you um, designed your own personality classroom yeah. yes yes so it's so interesting how uh, how life works right uh I think we all have dreams, hopes, wishes of the future, and we set on that path, and uh, we're, we're creative by 
by nature as beings. And I think my curiosity and my creativity led me to this. So in feng shui, it's based on the yin and yang principles, uh, which is sort of the feminine masculine principles. And from that evolves into the five elements. So the five elements are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. So in the ancient discipline, they use these five elements and they believe that everything in the world uh, can be relate are is related to these five elements from seasons. So summer would be fire, as an example, food, uh, spicy food would be fire. I'm using an example. Uh, uh, heart is ruled by uh, by fire. So organs, all of that, it's one big complex system. Anyway, as part of that, there's personality. So the water personality, the wood personality, that is something intrinsic to traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and it's used in feng shui. So the idea is in an environment, you want that environment to feel natural, like nature. So we take those elements that we naturally find in the environment and we try to bring it into our homes and offices so that we feel um, at ease. So we're trying to mimic the philosophy of nature in the environment. So with these five elements... Um, this is, yes. sorry to interrupt, and, and oh. this is unconscious, I imagine. Yes, like I we're think trying it, to take bring these elements and to surround us with them so that energy flows. Yeah, good point. Because think about an, a, a healthy nature scene. Water is flowing. The sun is shining. The trees, which is the wood, are flourishing. Uh, all of the earth is 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 rich and uh, uh, able to uh, nurture and grow grow food within it. So when nature is happy and we're out in a beautiful nature scene, we feel peaceful as human beings, we're organic, we're not computers and straight lines. There's nothing in nature that is a straight line. A straight line is man-made. And so we are, we are living organic moving beings. There's no uh, structure to us. So when we can put ourselves in a natural environment, we naturally are able to flow with that environment a lot more. So we all, in, and so they, the agents actually came up with these five elements being very relatable to help humans thrive. Mm. It's very interesting. And so from the personality aspect, one day I was writing, um, I had the idea to write a book on superpowers. And someone said to me, Oh, Alice, you're always so positive. Please write a book on how to be more positive. So I thought, okay, well, let me write a book on positivity as a superpower. So I, I thought, you know, this is back in 2018, 2019, actually, all of the superhero movies were out, Aquaman, Wonder Woman. So I asked this friend of mine, to draw me a superhero for my book. Uh, I'm gonna do a book on positivity. And he says, isn't there more than one superpower? Like, and I said, well, of course, but I'm gonna do it on positivity. And through the conversation, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I can take the elements and personify them and then elevate all of them into superhero status and a creative personality assessment so that you could take this assessment and determine what your archetype is. So that's where it all started. And uh, it was just for friends and family to get to know each other. But what happened was um, people started bringing it to their companies, to their teams, asking me to do a little team building with it. And one thing led to another, large organizations found it. So I have now completely rebuilt that into a team building tool. Uh, but I don't call it team building. I call it communication bridging. Communication? Bridging. Yes. Bridging. So bridging. Oh, to build the bridges between individuals, yeah. between silos. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. And I love how it came together by being in conversation with someone who was supposed to visually represent what you had in mind. And I think that's such a good process. It is almost facilitation because it you have to be precise, you need an interpreter. And 
Yeah. yeah. And it was, amazing. and I, I remember that day like it was yesterday because it was such an aha moment for me. I was just set on, just get me a superhero. I'm going to write this book. But he goes, wait, 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 wait. Isn't there more? And as he started talking to me, he says, aren't there other pillars of superpowers at positivity? What else? And then if he hadn't have asked the right questions, we wouldn't have that system today. So mm -hmm. yes, the brilliance of taking a moment to ask the right questions. Yeah, what a facilitator. <laughs> I know, and he didn't even know it. <laughs> and before, before I ask more about the test and how you apply it and how to use it then in, in group dynamics, I'd be curious whether it still applies to the zodiac signs and that's just very similar you know great question yes it does it's the it's the if you think five elements versus 12 zodiac signs so there's going to be a little bit of mixing and matching but for the most part if someone takes the five element uh superpower assessment and let's say their top element is uh fire and wood then in their zodiac, I will see things like Gemini, which is an air sign. Uh, I will see things like Leo, which is a fire sign. So I will definitely see correlations uh, in between the two systems because by nature, we just are who we are, right? When we are young, our, 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 our family, our parents, our teachers tend to say, why don't you be more like cousin Rebecca, she's more talkative, you're too quiet, or why do you talk so much? Why don't you be more like, like brother Joe, he's much more mature. So we start thinking that we are not, we are not right, like who we are is not who we should be. And um, I think that's the discovery of our own personal facilitation of ourselves through life is who am I truly? And where are my powers and not not where I'm lacking, but where am I good? Uh, so that's kind of where where I, I start thinking. Yeah, beautiful. And I think for for the work of a facilitator, this inner work is so important. <clears throat> yes, yes. To, to know where we are standing and um, to deal with our triggers and our the voice in our mind. <laughs> so true, so true. You're not good enough voice. And... So could you walk us through your, through the five elements? And so what are the different personality types? And I would be curious because many work with the disc model, for instance, of or for Myers-Briggs. So there are so many different personality tests. And I would be curious, so what is the difference in yours? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'll tell you the number one difference <laughs> is that with Myers-Briggs or DISC, if the next day after having a session, you and I met in the hallway and I said, Miriam, what are you? And you say, I'm an INFJ. I have no idea what that means. Or if I tell you I'm an ENFT or whatever the symbol is, we, we can't, I can't take it further. I have to learn the whole system before I understand. Um, same with DISC. Uh, it's, it's all so valuable in the moment and the day that you're learning. But how do you take that and actually not have to put a lot of time and energy into using it with the people that you work with to truly break down silos? So the difference with mine is it's memorable and it's fun. When it's mm -hmm. fun, you can't help but remember it. And you don't have to learn anything new. Like today, after I go through it, you get it. If you know the element, you know the person. So there's no additional learning. We don't need cognitive fuel to remember all the different archetypes. It's It becomes natural. So in just a very short time, you get the language. I'm only mm -hmm. teaching you five archetypes and you will see it in the people you facilitate with. You can tell within the first, oh, I don't even need people to take the assessment. You can tell by how they show up. Uh, it it's natural. It's just so interesting. So we, if you love, no, I like, want to know. You, you already see from my body language that I'm leaning okay. in. I'll tell me no more. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the five, and then you tell me uh, which you feel more affinity towards. 
Mm -hmm. after, after we're done. So let's start with water. Think about, maybe I'll ask you, tell me some qualities of water. I'm looking for things like it's transparent. It, what are some fluid. qualities? It's fluid, goes with the flow. It's flexible. It's flexible. It, it, you put it in a round container, it becomes round, yeah. square, square. And hence it takes, it takes the space it needs. Yes, it takes the space. It just expands to the perimeters of a border. Yeah. Um, uh, think about how if I take a, a glass yeah. and put it in the refrigerator, it becomes cool. It adjusts to its environment. It adapts. It, 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 it senses what's going on and it acclimates to that environment. Mm. And if it's too hot, it just evaporates. It even at steam too cold, it becomes hard. So it has many states. It goes from very hard and cold all the way up to hot steam, all the way to it's nourishing. We drink it to replenish our body. So just by understanding qualities of water, that's a person, a, a water person. They're very sensitive, sensitive to comments, right? Think of how the water goes from room temperature to chilly, chilly to room temperature. Water people need boundaries. They need to know how are they supported. Water mm -hmm. without a, a jar, it goes everywhere. And it's it's very, um, it disperses. Water goes with the flow. If I put it in a tube, it'll go down the tube. It can be fast or it can be slow and still. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it can be uh, one mood one day, a different mood the next day. So water people are sensitive. They go with the flow. They do not like friction. You can see right through them. They're transparent. Their emotions, they wear their emotions on their sleeve. Uh, their superpower is intuition because they're able to sense where other people are coming from. Because they're so sensitive, they take a while to warm up. So water people love to connect. Think about how water connects the, the continents and the islands. Mm -hmm. Water people are the connectors of the elements. And so a water person, if you're alone in the room, I will go and say, hey, Dr. Miriam, how are you? Come, let me introduce you to someone. So water people are connected when they are comfortable, when they know the structure. Mm -hmm. Then we go to wood. And very interesting, wood, very different. Think of a tree. So give me some Give me some it's solid, wood solid, is solid. Um, solid. It grows deep and needs the roots to be mm -hmm. to be stable. Mm -hmm. It it needs water to grow. Um, it grows in a very structured way, so it cannot just go everywhere. It's um, right, and. Yeah, it grows in three directions, so width and then depth and height. Okay. It needs all of it. Perfect. And so then you know what a wood person is like. So think about a tree. Water goes everywhere, but tree is planted. So it has to dig its roots deep into the earth to absorb all the nutrients. And its one purpose in life is to grow towards the sun. And it does, it grows up and out, but if there's a block, like a tree gets, I mean, a building gets built next to a tree, it's creative, it goes out and up mm -hmm. and around. So obstacles, no big deal yeah. for tree, right? Yeah. No big deal for water, water flows past obstacles. Trees are creative, they creatively move around things, but the most important thing about wood is it grows deep, it knows that it needs to be resourceful, and it also needs to keep moving towards the sun. So wood, when we are sleeping is still working, right? It's photosynthesis, cellular regeneration, it's moving. So wood people, they move, they're always on the move. They have a goal and they will reach their goal and they will utilize all their resources. They want to be efficient. They don't waste time. Trees do not waste time. Trees know their where they just plant where they're at and any obstacle they don't cry they creatively work uh, around it so wood people goal oriented very efficient uh extroverted think how trees grow up and out water is down more introverted trees go mm -hmm. up and out so 
that's a tree person. So you know that if you have a lot of wood, they are moving, they are talking, they are active, they have a goal, they're creative, they are resourceful. That is a tree. And they're also stable. And very stable if they are well grounded. Mm -hmm. See, if oh, a yeah. tree is it like every element has an upside and a downside. So awesome, creative, grounded, uh, you know, a very, um, very uh, resourceful. But if the tree is not getting the nutrients it wants, if the wood person is not nurturing itself, it is going to be a brittle tree. It could snap, it gets angry, it could fall off from its roots. So there's healthy water, right? There's stagnant water. There's a healthy tree, there's a stagnant tree. So yes, so it's it's all, it's, it's just so fascinating. So that's a tree. And I love that, that the water needs boundaries and the mm -hmm. tree needs roots. Yeah, the so, tree. And the tree will forcefully find ability. its roots. Yeah, the tree will say, let me thrive. Uh, let me thrive. And then, so for example, you're, let's pretend I'm a water, you're a tree. <laughs> and you say, well, let's go ask, ask that guy over there to help us. And then I'm like, oh no, but we're not supposed to talk to that guy. And you're like, well, let's go ask him because we need to get to that goal. But I'm like, no, 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 what, like, I, I don't know, is that okay? Like, I'm a little bit more mm -hmm. shy about it. Um, but if you initiate it, I will add the nutrition. I will add the water to make that a possibility. Interesting, yes, I can, I can see, I can already see it's people and myself. Easy. Yeah, very easy. So now we go to fire. Qualities of fire. Fire is? It's hot. Hot. It okay. takes um, it takes whatever is around to to grow it and to food. continue the flame. So it, yes. Uh, it spreads very quickly. Spread quickly. Um, so it's powerful. Powerful. Yep. It brings light. It can warm or it can burn. Uh, it can light or it can uh, blind you. It consumes very quickly. And out of all of the elements, we if we see or hear the word fire, we look. So it's it draws attention. Mm. Wood, we just say beautiful trees, water, we think about it. Nobody thinks about the earth, you know, but fire it's showy so fire people when they show up they're in bright colors they're the life of the party they're optimistic they're the cheerleaders they're the ones that say no big deal let's just keep moving forward so fire tends to be bright positive extroverted and they uh, I, I always also like to say fire people like to have like think about the mane of a lion fire mm -hmm. people are they're just very beautiful and, and, and luxurious and they show up and they bring light to the, the to the party and they make great leaders because they're very encouraging warm optimistic looks for the bright side. Uh, and as you as you mentioned water fuels wood to grow wood fuels fire right mm. so fire burns bright so the fire person is the one in the class that sits in the front that wears bright clothes that answers the questions that's fire <laughs> yeah. then we go to earth and you think okay earth the ground that we walk on so give me qualities of earth it's stable it's robust mm -hmm. grounded mm -hmm. it's nurturing Mm -hmm. um, yeah that's it that's an earth person grounded nurturing solid stable earth moves very slowly think about how earth is down water gravitation is down earth is more introverted they love to share share their resources share food with you uh they move a little bit more slowly wood is go 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 fire is up and out earth is stable so earth people they're stable they're your loyal friends they're patient they take their time uh if you if you need someone to talk to go your earth friend will be right there mm -hmm. your wood friend is busy <laughs> your fire friend is at a party <laughs> uh, your water friend will be there to nurture you so wood earth is a little bit quieter they're the silent supporters 
They're the ones that say, do you need an extra hand? Can I help you? Think about it. We walk on the earth. So earth people naturally are a service oriented uh, person. Yeah. So fun, right? And then metal, completely different. So qualities of metal. Metal is cold, but very solid. Cool, solid. Yeah. It's not flexible un unless you heat it. <laughs> and yes. then it depends. Yes. But it's precious because it's unbreakable. Yes. And it's so interesting. So we start with metal contracts in the earth, right? So mm -hmm. metal contracts. So they're very introverted. So they appear to be very cool, cool headed, cool hearted. They, they're the ones that think that personality tests are stupid. Like, why are we wasting time with this? The metal people are the linear. Let's make sure that everything is done right. Very organized, very solid. They take, they, they do not, um, they do not commit right away. They mm -hmm. take time to warm up because think about metal in order to bend metal, we have to warm it a lot to bend it. So mm -hmm. metal takes a long time to commit, but when they commit, they commit. Once the metal is bent, it is in that shape. Whereas wood person, sure, count me in. Fire person, sounds like fun. It, 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 but metal, they're not going to give you an answer till they're sure. So they take their time. They want things to be just right. They appear to be cool, but they're very sensitive because they are reactive. So whereas a water person is transparent, she is upset. She will get moody. Uh, you might see it on her face. Metal people will be upset but almost like you won't see it, but they are reacting inside, but they're very meticulous, very careful, very polished. They like to take, a. if you take a long time, you can make the metal shiny and round, it can go fast. Or if you don't take the time to polish metal, it becomes rusty and clunky. So metal is very refined in all they do and they take their time. So those are the five archetypes that, um, that we see. Oh, mm. oh, one more thing. Creative. So water fuels wood, wood fuels fire. When fire burns out, it becomes earth. From the earth, we get metal mm. and metal um, can liquefy into water. So that's the creative cycle. And if everyone is, cre is in a good space, we are awesome. We recognize each other's strengths and weaknesses. We're in the flow, but water puts out fire, fire, can melt metal, metal can chop wood, break it up. Wood digs its roots into the earth and takes all the nutrients and earth can stop the flow of, wa of water because of putting sand in water. So every element has its checks and balance. And so when an environment goes sort of in a stress mode, let's say we're all together in a company, we're working, we're very stressed, then the 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 wood person is fast let's go 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 metal person very slow so it's metal chops wood so wood says let's hurry get to the goal metal says let's take our time get the details right and then they judge each other so they don't understand why are you in such a rush you don't want to make mistakes wood says we'll figure it out along the way creative but metal is like no 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 we need it right. We need approval. We need to check and balance. So you can see how when you're in a good space, everything flows, but we have natural checks and balances. Beautiful. Thank you for walking us through. Where's the wind? Oh, so wind is a different discipline. So if we look in like shamanic um, Native American Indian, they use the wind a lot. Um, so wind is considered in this discipline as the invisible force because mm -hmm. it is not seen. Wind, you only see the effect of wind. You cannot see wind itself. So wind is not um, part of the actual elements. Okay, thank you for yeah. that presentation. And I love that. And now I can perfectly see what you meant that it provides an easy language to to yeah. teams and individuals, and then they can yeah. almost tell a story. Yeah. Or definitely so, tell a story. So all of a sudden, I'm like, no wonder you are metal. No wonder you're so picky. No wonder you don't like me. I'm fire. I melt you. <laughs> you know. So there's a language that we learn immediately after the the training, and uh, people will say, 
why don't you well, let's bring more earth to this meeting meaning let's take our time let's ground ourselves let's not be so uh firewood so we can actually use the language and that's that's where the value has come with the various organizations the the language lasts far past the facilitation i like that and i wonder because now i can see the multiple areas to apply that yeah. you can apply it to to foster a conversation for the team to understand each other better to communicate better maybe to be a little bit more compassionate yeah that's really what it is mm -hmm. and yeah. okay i have several questions actually i i will park the one how i will park one question for you and come back to it later okay um because I can also see how it can help facilitators then get a sense of the room and who are the participants in the space. And I wonder whether you can use this to better deal with air quotes, difficult participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the, the participants who knows it all <laughs> um, or who speaks a lot. Yeah. Um, is very communicative and wants to contribute and is so excited that they don't realize yeah. that they are taking so much space. Yeah. Are these then also, do you find this kind of behavior specifically in a certain element? Mm -hmm. Or how do you, and then, and if so, um, what can you do with this knowledge? Yeah. So because I have the language of the elements to base everything on, I can actually say, wood and fire, be quiet. <laughs> the water people need to speak. Water, do you have anything to say? So I can acknowledge the elements. And when I joke and I say, metal, I know you have a lot of thoughts going on and I, you just need time to share. So I'm gonna give you a minute to think about what you're gonna say. And it, you know, so I can use the elements and their personalities because wood, and fire, they talk, they they take up space in the room. Water, earth, and metal tend to be a little bit more withdrawn because they are more introverted. So oftentimes I will do breakout sessions so they can talk to each other because they work better in smaller groups. Water needs to feel secure, so they need smaller groups. They feel insecure speaking up in a big group unless they are certain they are secure. Water's biggest downfall is their insecurity. Wood's biggest downfall is they get very um, they get very indecisive. They're moving too quickly. They can't figure out where to go. Uh, so you see, so fire, their downfall is negativity. So their, 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 their virtue is confidence. Think about the sun. The sun just emanates and the planets orbit around it. That's, the su that's fire. Uh, the sun doesn't go look for planets to orbit around. So the sun, the fire people like attention. So if you don't give them attention, they go, ah, that's not a good thing anyway. They turn negative on you. So when you understand the elements, you understand the people and you understand how to kind of make sure every element gets an equal say, but you create the environment that makes that element feel safe. And then if I understand correctly, you can basically use the language to, to still communicate that someone is taking too much space yeah. in this context, yeah. Yeah. but without being offensive. Yeah, the, these people, the firewood people, they get, they don't get offended at all. <laughs> they're not sensitive because they're up, out and going. They have their own agenda. They move the way they want. So if you tell them, hey, be quiet, they'll just be quiet. Like they won't feel offended. But if a water person expresses themselves and you say, be quiet, they're going to, they're going to not talk the whole rest of the time. Same with metal. They're very sensitive. So understanding that is such a key. So does it then mean that if a facilitator is a water or a metal person, we just overestimate the the reaction uh, when we shut someone down? Yeah, and I think there's ways, right? And so in the in the training, I talk about how um, just how to talk to the elements so that they they feel like you get them. Like there's these phrases we use. Uh, we say. 
oh, I feel out of my element, right? We, we say that. Um, it, it's like, that is so um, important to like understand every element has its own thing. And I've done this long enough, I can pretty much tell who is what, uh, if I've worked with you a little bit. Uh, it's it, it, so yes, it does depend, but y you can, you certain elements, they don't get upset when you shut them down. Mm -hmm. It's like you're giving them attention. So they're okay. <laughs> Beautiful. And how can it change? Because I wonder if I know that I'm water and I do need these boundaries and I is it then is it always like that so i'm born as water and i will remain water but then maybe i can just be a better version of myself because i know how to treat myself right that's a good in the context that helps me i think that we as human beings are dynamic by nature we learn we grow we evolve we change depending on the environment we are put in, we might have to sharpen some skills that we don't have. So let's say I am a very shy water metal, let's just say, okay, more introverted. But all of a sudden, I'm at work and uh, some some personnels have shifted. And now I have to be the one to do the presentations to the clients. And I'm introverted, I'm shy, I don't want to, but I can't lose my job. So then I have to bring up the fire element in me. So let's say over time, I become used to it. If I tested you, the fire would come up. So we're always changing levels of elements within us. All of us have the five elements in us at varying degrees and varying levels. We naturally have two predominantly strong ones that we operate with, but it doesn't mean we don't have the other ones. So we've tested people after the pandemic the primary tends to say the same. So what happens is you take the assessment and you are one of 20 archetypes based on the top two elements. Mm -hmm. So whatever your top two are, the primary tends to stay the strongest. But after the after the pandemic, we retested people and I was shocked because I created the system. I didn't have enough time to understand it all of a sudden. Oh, my gosh. I did this one company and oh my goodness, like 60, 70% had changed archetypes. So I was like, oh my God, what happened? So we started to um, analyze it. People that had to deal with uh, childcare and figuring out how to do this, running back and forth, their wood element went up. Mm -hmm. The people that actually lost their jobs or their jobs became more sedentary, earth went up, earth is, sedentary the people that were had to implement the rules six rules six feet rules put up the barriers all the the meticulous their metal went up so we started recognizing that we are human beings that are ever changing based on who we're with what our environment is and so to your question you 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 definitely have some primary elements but we we improve and change as we go and you're different on vacation than you are at a stressful job and mm -hmm. so the different elements start to come into play so yeah it does change fascinating so as a facilitator um okay that was my question parked was the one whether it can change thank you so i can okay <laughs> Um, as a facilitator, then how can someone work with that? So um, would you arrange the, your training in a specific way so that it speaks to all the different elements? And would you assemble the room in a certain way so that also the from a Feng Shui kind of perspective it works? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the way that I do this is I just allow whatever to, <coughs> from a feng shui perspective or from any kind of perspective, I just allow the room to fill however it fills. I think it's just me holding that awareness of knowing that there's different archetypes in the room. And as the moments go on, I start to be able to identify the waters and the woods and the fires. And that just, it, it 
helps me, uh, but I don't really do anything different other than if someone is a little bit more on the quiet side, then I try to discern which one they are and I might give them a little more time to respond. Or if I'm asking them a question and someone talks, I might have them hold just a moment while they gather their thoughts because some people need time in order to bring forth their ideas mm -hmm. or some people need security. So I, I, I ascertain that and I think very intuitively. Um, however, if they are there for a superpowers facilitation, I have all their scores in front of me. <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. And I just realized how, how interesting it is just to keep in mind. So that's how I make sense out of it right now is knowing that, okay, the waters need a little bit of more boundaries. The other one need more um, grounding. Yes. The others yes. need um, maybe a little bit more space. Yes. Yes. So how can I to really be at their best? Um, so how can I then take, care of that so that everyone's minimum standards of are met. performing well are met yeah and I think you know and I think it's the ability as a facilitator to read the room and to understand the dynamics and it takes a little bit of time so I I usually I usually like to start with if I have time with a group I usually like to start with a um, an exercise where uh, I just break people into pairs. They may or may not know each other. It doesn't matter. And I ask them to interview each other and come back with two things. The first thing is um, find out a story from that person that they think no one knows. And the second thing is to, um, to kind of talk talk to me about what they would like to get out of kind of what they would like to get out of today and when the two people come back instead of me saying it to the group because sometimes shy people don't like to talk about themselves if you and i were paired together when we come back to the group i would say uh or you would say you would say i talked to alice and what you may not know about alice is that when she was eight years old she cut her hair off and and her parents were upset uh and what she wants to get out of it is blank and when i understand when i hear that i really will get a hint of um mm -hmm. you know who they are so that's kind of one way and then it gives the shy people the water the metals the the earth a chance to um uh, to sh express themselves in a comfortable situation because it's one-on-one -on -one. and i find that and that kind of about helps themselves them. And yeah. then in the larger group, it's not about themselves. So it's yeah. easier to talk about someone yeah. else. Yeah. Very nice. And you as a trainer or facilitator, you then learn about both. So the way how they voice is and how comfortable they are to talk yeah. about someone else tells yeah. you something as well as the content of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's just small ways. And I think that over time, we intuitively kind of understand the flow that we need to go with. The pace is always different. The dynamics are different, right? Who you have to um, elicit information from, who you need to just kind of calm down a bit. And uh, yeah, whether it's the elements or just any other training, I think that it's, it's that kind of interaction in the beginning always helps me <clears throat> because I am a strong water which means, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. So I am a strong water, which means that I need to know what my boundaries are. So it's really for me to understand the room. So I feel confident and secure, not just going in, not knowing anything. So it's more for me <laughs> than it is for anything else. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. What remains your number one facilitation challenge? not talking i i tell you i don't know why but i think that i i tend to know everything which i don't but when i get uncomfortable with silence i talk and that is the hardest thing for me to do i fill up the space when i really need to just give it space and i'm constantly fighting that which is very watery yeah because once <laughs> yeah it's just, just when you're going, unsecure yeah. because you don't you don't understand the yes. the, boundary. the boundary i'm not secure i need security so i 
I, it's funny. It's, that is my number one thing is to not, to, to get out of my own way and mm -hmm. allow the group dynamic to be the value, not me. Like I sometimes have to remind myself, I am just there to allow people to find out more of what they know. I'm not here to tell people what they should know. Uh, and it's a constant battle for me. Interesting. I love it. So I would consider from your explanation, I would also consider myself as a water person. Um, and one of my challenges is that yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place. So I want to do it all. Too many ideas. Yeah. If I don't have boundaries, it just like overflows. Yeah, it, it's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, and it's I'm spreading myself too thin. It's oh, exactly, very awful. exactly. And so holding boundaries, otherwise we want to nurture others. So an unhealthy, if you're not aware of your water nature, if someone needs your help, you're there, you're feeding it, you're giving, you're giving, and then you're drained. And when you're drained, you become more emotional because you don't have what you need for yourself. And so there's always the, the upsides and the downsides. There's no better element. Every element has its own challenges. Yeah. And then this would be, I think, an entire different um, conversation about which elements work best together. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's really all you have to do is remember what I said. There's a circle. Right, there's a circle. So water feeds wood, wood feeds fire, fire feeds earth, earth to metal. So those actually are considered more compatible. It's the water fire, water puts out fire, water fire are not as compatible. Um, wood, fast, 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 earth, slow, slow, slow. Wood breaks up earth, so wood and earth. So you, there's actual opposition. So in a team, what we do with the assessment is we can actually create a chart that shows who supports who, who challenges who. And when you're aware of that, you're like, I get it. I don't like you, but I understand you. That's the difference. Mm. And then suddenly, and I think that's the magic of these concepts, that suddenly it's not about you, it's not about who you are, it's just the way how you sometimes show up and and then we have a story around it and, and yeah. a system to take care of it, yeah. Yeah, and I think we all have an ego and we all want to be right and uh, this just helps us to set aside the I am right, you are wrong to wow, you're just really different from me. I don't get you. I would act like you, but I get that's you. So how can I work with you so we can collectively get to whatever goal we need to get to in this work we're doing together? So that is to me the advantage, understanding the person and knowing, accepting them as they are. Yeah. Yeah, which then makes a thriving team. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And in your experience, what makes a workshop fail? I think when you go in with an agenda without allowing flexibility or not allowing changes, like you say, this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to accomplish and these are the modules I'm going to cover. I think that structure doesn't allow it to optimize. Uh, I think coming in with a general agenda, like we'll, go, we'll probably do these, but not stick to it and let the group tell you what they need to, to flow with. So it's not always what I want. I think that's, that's what mm -hmm. makes it fail. If I come in saying, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to accomplish and cover. Sometimes I'm just bulldozing over something that could be very valuable. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And now I'm now I'm wondering because the flow, the taking with the flow, letting things emerge is again very watery. I wonder whether a more wood facilitator would then prefer more structure. Okay, this is this is how we do it, this the agenda, having prepared not the exact way of doing it and maybe being. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, think about that. Think of a person who is high wood and metal. 
Wood is go, go, go. We got to reach the goal. Metal, let's do it perfectly. So a wood metal comes in and they have an agenda. They want to cover so many modules and they need to follow the schedule. Um, they might need to pull in their silent water, go with the flow self. They need to pull in the a different uh, element to allow things to go. So it's that awareness. Uh, and again, that's why every facilitator has their own strength. They're known for certain things. Like I being a strong water, I, I am known to help people connect. That's all I wanna do. Island to island, nation to nation, water. How can I use my system to help all of you connect better? Because we're one big world, we're one big country, we're one big company with all the different islands. So water tends to connect. And I like, I love to connect people and connect with people. Beautiful. One more question. How um, to come back to the cycle um, and especially to the opposites, to, so yeah. to the threats. If Earth know that what is coming to extract yeah. the nutrients and the fire is coming to to attack the wood, yeah, um, and the water is coming to uh, to, yeah. to extinguish the fire, how do I? What are the examples, and how can I maybe see it coming and then say, oh, okay, how can I protect myself from that from these? trigger moments because that's what it is yeah so if it's a personal person so if i see it unfolding in a workshop where there's disagreements and someone's trying to talk over somebody sometimes i just let it go because they eventually the elements balance out at the end they come to some 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 level of learning is garnered from that now if i am personally in this one second uh, yeah so, uh -huh. um before we come to the personal yeah. Because this assumes that you have um, an equal distribution mm -hmm. of the elements. Because if we are coming to a team where there's only wood and fire, then we have a problem. Different. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we do this team assessment and uh, a, a whole team, just like a person has two highest archetypes, mm -hmm. teams have two highest. And so we do an archetype of the team. So if you are a team that has a lot of wood fire, then you have to consciously bring in structure and organization, metal, empathy, water, nourishing each other, earth. You have to bring that in from the outside or consciously to have a, a, a team that has all the elements necessary for growth. Uh, yeah. So great question because yeah we don't always have equal it's rare that it's equal when there's a lot of water there's a lot of um drama and emotion when people aren't getting what they need because it's a water crying emotions uh if it's too much fire sometimes they don't get anything done they're just having fun having parties <laughs> you know so we can definitely see the personality of a team whether it's a i did an organization of 300 people a huge organization of just leaders, 300 leaders, and they were lacking in earth, like major, it's a fast food company, earth is slow, no earth was there. So they know that they bring earth to the meeting, you know, let's just sit for a moment, you know, metal is uh, details, let's sit, did we miss any details? Because firewood, it's just go, go, go fast, fast. Thank you. I'm glad I asked that question. So, and when you apply to yourself? So <clears throat> when I apply it to myself, it's it's a little hard. I have to learn to be multi-elemental, meaning we all have these elements uh, within me. So when I facilitate, my secondary is a fire. So I'm able, once I feel secure, I'm able to shine, be positive, bring hope. But um, I have to remember, the earth, the metal people, I need to slow down for them. So I use it uh, in that way. And I always expect that the metal person will ask me, what is the point of all this? This is stupid. Like, why are we sitting here with superheroes? This is a professional meeting, right? I already anticipate metal will be judgmental. That's just how they are. So I have all my answers prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that you won't get triggered. Yeah. Because you're aware of your potential trigger points by the, the yeah. Outcome. 
Yeah, I understand. I get it. Not everybody is happy to do it. Not I, I, I totally I get it. Like everyone comes with a different agenda, a different level of 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 evolution in their personality. So I yeah, I, I tend to I think the system has helped me understand people a lot more. So I don't take it personally. And I think that is the gift of this whole thing is that when someone is blunt with me, it's not me. That's how they operate. And I can let that go so much easier. Mm. Yes. Yeah. In a perfect world, all elements operate in harmony. Um, but in a perfect world, the elements also keep each other in check. So mm. it's impossible to just inhale, inhale, inhale without exhaling, right? There's, we live in a world, there's up, down, left, right, hot, cold, sweet, sour, day and night. Just like that, there has to be both collaboration and conflict in order for these new answers and these new solutions to come out. So I kind of welcome it now, whereas before I shied away from conflict, now I actually welcome it because we learn from it. Mm. Yes, that's so rich. And and through conflict, we learn about ourselves. We redefine the boundaries. Um, yeah. As you say, yeah, the moment we don't take conflict personal. Yeah, makes a difference. It really does. Uh, wood people, when they are stressed, they tend to yell and be very blunt and get very, very strong with their words. Uh, I'm very sensitive. So if a wood person just, it just tells, says, wow, well, you know, chops me off or, you know, that sort of quick, like, why did you do it this way? You know, I thought we talked about it that way. I, I as a water, I can get a little shook, shaken, like, oh my God, I feel so bad. I didn't mean to cause trouble. But if I recognize like, oh, he's stressed, that's why he's yelling because he's wood or she's wood. I don't tend to feel as hurt by it. I get that that's just them being stressed. And there's a lot of um, forgiveness around it. A lot of like, ah, oh, I get it. You're just stressed. Yeah. And then and then the stress becomes an expression of the lack of something. So mm -hmm. if a wood screams or yells, it's because something is in their way of go, go, go. Because yeah. they can't achieve or they're not getting the nutrients they need or they may be not grounded enough yeah. so there's a little bit of shakiness mm -hmm. so that's why we say to a, exactly so that's why we say to a wood what can i do how can i support you what do you need because wood needs resources to grow so they're stressed because they can't get to that goal which is a wood's natural need to finalize and get there so they need nutrients they need resources so your best thing when you see a wood stressed you say what do you need? How can I help you? What resources do you need? Then ah, they feel like you're supporting them. Where can I do your book or your assessment? Oh, yeah. So it's a it's funny how it I mean, literally, it just started as this fun thing. It was a great idea. And now it's become a thing. I mean, I'm getting a white paper written on it. We're doing research. We're just trying to take it to that next level. But you can uh, find it at MasterYourSuperpowers.com. Very simple. MasterYourSuperpowers.com. Beautiful. We'll definitely put it in the show notes. Thank you. And what comes next for you, if you want to give for us me. Well, I think what happened was this whole uh, discovery of my system by McDonald's and Gap and these larger companies has really forced me to up level the coding and the development. And now we um, we now just recently created inclusive inclusivity. Now inclusive is important. Uh, people were saying, how did you how come you genderize the elements male and female what about me i don't feel included i don't identify with either gender so i was trying to honor the ancient um uh what they call i guess the gen it's not gender it's just the 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 properties which is more yin or more yang so now we have a um an, uh, an assessment where you are you male are you female or are you non-binary so that way you can maybe relate to one the other or both so that's kind of so right now that's that's my 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 um goal is to up level the assessment and get everything automated it's interesting um how words 
Yeah, and these boxes create um, all these challenges. Yeah. And yeah. and it's, I wouldn't have expected it coming from that direction because I would think, yes, there's yin and yang and whether you call it male energy and female energy, we all have yin and yang inside yes, of us. Yeah. Um, yes. And it doesn't necessarily have has to do what sex we are or what gender we identify with. Yeah, but it's become a thing. I think that until I implemented this into our system, every time, I mean, without, without a exaggeration, almost every time at the end, either publicly or privately, someone will come to me and say, uh, why male, female? I, I don't feel included here. And so that's what cued me that I need to make a change. And uh, then it, it's it's just where we are today. Um, even though I explain yin and yang, my characters definitely look male or female because yeah. I based it on the 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 nature versus the gender. But how do you draw something that's personified into a male female? as a, a, a non-binary or it's very difficult. So we struggled with that. We, you know, we tried to draw characters that had both, uh, both ma masculine and feminine qualities in them, but we couldn't quite get it for everyone to agree on it because it's so, it's so personal. So I just left it that if you test and you choose non-binary, both genders show up and you can feel what, where you are within that, that range. Mm. What yeah, so that's what, what I've been working on that it was it's it sounds easy to do an inclusive uh assessment but it really took a lot of thinking I can imagine yeah and it's interesting yeah all it brings up and uh you learn so much about yeah then the people and how times change yes 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 thank you so much for taking the time Alice it is my pleasure. Thank you for listening to my entire <laughs> explanation of all the elements. It's so near and dear to me, and I love it so much. So I just really appreciated that you took the time to listen to all of the talking about it. Yeah, and I will continue to think about it because I find it intriguing, really. <laughs> and I think even for those who don't believe in it. So mm -hmm. maybe for some say, oh, that's too woo-woo. The metal people. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I generally believe that even on a meta level, if you take away all the elements yeah. and all the categorization, I think what you shared about human dynamics and how um, human beings relate to each other and deal with each other and how we can find a way to find comfort yeah. in the conflicts and in the dynamics and in the yin and yang and in between yes yeah i find this uh, very inspiring thank you i really was inspired to talk to you i was really looking forward to having our conversation we started talking months ago and here we are today <laughs> sharing our our insights yes on the opposite sides of the world yes yes <laughs> day for Hawaii me and the and Netherlands. For <laughs> yeah beautiful i wish you a wonderful day Thank you Thank so much you. for sharing. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da.